Hi everybody, Adam Alexander Javiaris here, and today I'm in ancient Olympia. I thought I'd take you around the archaeological site, show you where some of my new book, Heart of Fire, takes place. So it's a short to of a day, and there are a lot of tourists here, so we better get started. palestra of Olympia, and the palestra was where the training for wrestling, boxing, and penetration happened, and it was, it was a sort of martial arts school, and uh, so this whole area would have been sand called the skama, and here people would have been sparring with other competitors, and they also had uh, punching bags called koriki hanging around, and you could see it surrounded by a colonnade, which was covered, and then there are rooms on the sides of the palestra. There's the eleotician, which was for applying olive oil to the body before fighting, and the conicurion, which was where you put chalk or dust on your body and hands. So this is this was built in the third century BC, and uh, the ruins are pretty magnificent. So off to the next site. Over here, we've got the ruins of the 5th century bathhouse and the open air swimming pool. This is the bathhouse over here, pretty well overgrown, um, but you can imagine in the heat of the Greek summer, if the athletes, after working out on the scama or running in the stadium, they would have been pretty hot. So relaxing and getting clean in the bathhouse would have been great. And then getting into the open air swimming pool, which would have been located just over here, uh, would have been great. Now, the river Clavios is just beyond the fence here, and that's one of the rivers that intersects at ancient Olympia. The other river, of course, is the river Alfeos. So, let's go on to the next site. Here, we have what's called the Theocolion, and that is built in the 5th century BC, and this is where the priests of Olympia, the Theokoli, lived. Now, religion and religious ceremonies were a very big part of the Olympic Games. Half of it is athletic, half of it is religious ceremony. So the Theokoli were a part of every step of the way. This, of course, is the workshop of Phidias. Now, Phidias was the sculptor who created the statue of Olympian Zeus, which is one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. And it was built out of ivory and gold, which is called chryselephantine. And he made that statue in this workshop here. So this is a very special place at Olympia. And, of course, the statue of Zeus was in the temple of Zeus, which was at the heart of the sanctuary, and we'll see that later. So the statue of Olympian Zeus was built by Phidias in 430 BC. Now we're on the outside of the workshop here, but directly behind me here is the house of the Phaedrinte. Now the Phaedrinte were the men who were charged with special care of the statue of Olympian Zeus. Now they had a very important job here at Olympia, and this is where they lived. So this building here, this is called the Bulestirian, and this was the home of the Council of Olympia, and where the Elenodike, the judges of Olympia, were based. 
Now, the Bulefirian was also the place where the athletes swore their Olympic oath to compete fairly and honorably. And they swore this oath before a statue of Zeus Ochios, Zeus of Old. And part of the ceremony was the sacrifice of a wild boar. So this is a very important building, dates back to the 6th century BC and uh, central to the Olympic uh, ceremony. Right now we're in the southeast corner of ancient Olympia, and behind this building, which is a Roman building, is the Hippodrome of Olympia. Now the Hippodrome is where all the equestrian and horse racing events took place. The Hippodrome was about four stages long, and that's 770 meters, roughly. So it takes up many, many fields behind this building, but unfortunately the Hippodrome's been washed away over, the, over time by the river Alpheus, which is, runs along this side of the sanctuary here. Now chariot racing is a big part of Heart of Fire, but it's also a big part of one of the foundation myths of the ancient Olympic Games, which is the legendary chariot race between Pelops and Enamount. So, time to move on to the next site. Right now, I'm standing in the middle of the Altus. Now, the Altus is a very important place in the Olympic Sanctuary. This was the beating heart of the Olympic Sanctuary. And in it, there was about 69 altars to the gods and a forest of Epinician bronze statues. Now, those were statues that Olympic victors were allowed to dedicate to themselves in the sanctuary. Now there was also the great temple of Zeus here, the temple of Hera over there, the Pelopian, which was the burial mound of the hero Pelops, and beside the Pelopian was the great altar of Zeus. And we'll look at each of those sites individually next. Right now I'm standing in front of the Temple of Olympian Zeus in the heart of the Alcus of Olympia. Now inside the temple was the statue of Olympian Zeus built by Phidias, and the temple itself was built in the mid-5th century BC. Behind the temple was a sacred olive grove that they used to make the olive crowns for Olympic victors. And on the temple itself are some of the most famous statue groups in ancient Greek history. On the west facade, was the statue group that showed Apollo overseeing a battle between the centaurs and the lapis. And on the east facade, this facade here, was Zeus flanked by Enamos and Pelops just before their legendary chariot race. And in front of the temple of Zeus, over here, is a triangular pedestal that had the goddess Niki on top of it. Now this statue of Niki and the statue group from the pediment can all be seen inside the museum. The mound behind me is where the great altar of Zeus was located in the middle of the Altus of Olympia. Now this used to be a very large cone-shaped structure that was built up over centuries of bone and ash from the offerings to Zeus at Olympia. Now the biggest uh, religious ceremony to take place during the Olympic Games happened on day three of the Games and it was a hecatomb. And a hecatomb was the sacrifice of a hundred bulls and it all happened right here on the Great Altar of Zeus. Behind me is the Pelopian, which is the hero shrine for Pelop, who defeated Inomaus in the Great Chariot Race for the hand of Inomaus' daughter, Ipodamia. Inside of the shrine was the burial mound that was said to contain Pelop's bones. And some of you may not know this, but the Peloponnese is actually named after Pelops. It's the Isle of Pelops. <laughs> right now I'm standing outside one of the more picturesque ruins at ancient Olympia, and that's the Temple of Hera behind me. It dates to about 600 BC, and it was, of course, where the goddess Hera was worshipped. It's 
said that a couch inside the temple contained the bones of Hippodamia, the wife of Pilaf. Now, also in the temple were 20 shields that were used in the event called the Hoplitodromos, which was the hoplite race. And that involved 20 men in full armor, each running with one of those sacred shields in a sprint in the stadium. Also outside the temple, in that cordoned off area behind the crowd over there, is where they lit the sacred Olympic flame from the light of the sun. And they still light it there to this day. Here we have what's known as the crypt. This is the tunnel that leads into the stadium of Olympia where most of the athletic competitions took place. Now in 396 BC when Heart of Fire takes place, the crypt was not covered, but it became covered later. So then it became a tunnel that led into the blinding light of the stadium and the roar of over 40,000 spectators. Right now I'm standing in the stadium of ancient Olympia, in the shadow of the hill of Kronos behind me. Now this stadium is where most of the athletic competitions took place. It's one stayed long, which is just about 200 meters, and it had a capacity of over 40,000 spectators. There are water conduits running all around the edges of the stadium where athletes and spectators could refresh themselves. There was a special seat for the priestess of Dimitra Shemain, which was the only woman who was allowed to watch the athletic competition. And then a special seating area for the Helenodike, who were the judges at ancient Olympia. This is a fantastic sight. And you can see here the original starting line. So I'm just going to stand here and run because this place makes me feel like running. I hope you've enjoyed this short video series on the archaeological site of ancient Olympia. In writing Heart of Fire, this site has really come to life for me. And even though I've been here several times, I never get tired of seeing it. There's a lot to experience in this place and in the archaeological museum that goes along with it. Heart of Fire is out now on Amazon, Apple iBooks, and on Kobo, and it's in ebook and paperback. So get your copy today. If you want to learn more about the ancient Olympic Games, you can read the 10-part blog series on eaglesanddragonspublishing.com and you can find out more about the book there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.